Devontae Johnson, our referee for this one. Oli Geddes gets us underway with 15 on the clock. Big weight difference between the two guys here. I yeah. think uh, Ari's coming in about 10 kilos heavier, but that's really going to play in it the longer the match goes. A 15-minute yes. match. Is a, Ari's a big dude. He is. A lot of wear and tear over the time. Devontae, 96 kilos, just over at, nine, at Wayne's. Uh, 103 for S. Van Maas. They're yeah. tying up very heavy here. As, well, as you can see there, yeah. Devontae trying to grab that leg. It's like a tree. You do expect this one to, to have a fair bit of play out on the feet. Both very well versed there. Devontae had a great year oh. his first year as black belt. Uh, you won brown belts worth the world Wait. last year and then has just been on a tear recently. Winning Europeans. Winning, I think, Nogi Europeans as well. I uh, got a second at uh, Nogi Euros this year. Yeah, originally from Patterson, New Jersey. Joined Unity in uh, New York City in 2015. He's actually faced several Polaris veterans before and come out on the right side of them. Santeri Lilius and Freddy Vosgrone are amongst those. Just going to get reset to the middle here. As Fanmas, by contrast, a little less well known on the wider stage. He's really more, more known for his gi ventures. You yeah, know. we've certainly seen him, I think, twice before in the gi. Yeah, he put on a fantastic performance, uh, I believe, against Jamie Hughes. Really dominated Jamie. Yeah, submitted him by bow and arrow choke at uh, Polaris 9. Yeah, I has done a lot of stuff in the Abu Dhabi scene as well. Uh, many competing in the gi, so it's, it's nice to see him uh, with the versatility looking to compete in no gi as well. No, it's a big disadvantage for him. He's come back from a judo background as well uh, in the gi. His stand-up is obviously he's going to feel a lot more comfortable, so it's really good to see him out here uh, throwing it down without the gi as well. Yeah, and they are getting stuck into the grip fights here. Some aggressive frames to clear those posts. You see as is weighing very heavy on that right-hand collar tie. You know, and that might not pay too many dividends right now, but over the course of 15 minutes, it's uh, very draining. Arm dragged a single attempted by Bones there. Yeah, if you've never had someone collar tie you for 15 minutes, it feels like you've been in a car <laughs> accident the next day. Yeah, and you can see hips all the way back here as they weigh on those heads. Originally, we were hoping to have uh, Devontae Johnson's teammate, Joao Miao, up in our co-main event. He unfortunately had to pull out, and we have a very able replacement tonight in that co-main, in Richard Red Alicorn. He's challenging uh, Ash Williams for the vacant bantamweight title. And so far, gents, it's all on the feet for these two. Yeah, Devontae definitely looking like he's pushing the pace a little bit more, a couple of attempts, but like you said, like trying to take down a, a tree trunk there uh, with the heavier athlete looking pretty immovable. Yeah, you see, trying to strip that collar tie, and there again, this fan man is trying to pull into the, uh, the trip. Oh, and that's a nice pickup on the single. Yeah, much better attempt that time. You see, it is, it's a lot of weight when he straightens his leg back down to the ground, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> it can take some time to get used to uh, the range, the distance of people when you are wrestling them. And when you dial that in, it starts to become a lot easier. Coming up to the end of the first four minutes here, neither one with a... A really good bite of anything as of yet. This fan man is really starting to play that collar game though, snapping down over and over. Yeah, well he's coming from that judo background, he's going to be a lot more likely to look to tie up the upper body and look to go for a trip, uh, opposed to Devontae, who's much more likely to look to try and shoot. There you see uh, Owen O'Flanagan. Faint with the head, Arya. Who was uh, not victorious on his undercard match <laughs> earlier today in the corner of Aria Svanmaz. Aria looked like he was about to load up Bones then and send him for a ride. I mean, Oli Geddes stopping him with that powerful <laughs> voice. Very impressive. Yeah, trying to keep control here are our referees, mm. Oli Geddes and Greg Creel. And as you mentioned earlier, Dan, you know, it'll be interesting to see as this goes deeper is the gas tank there for Svanmaz. Yeah, it's a lot of weight to be carrying around. I actually had a 20-minute match with Aria in the past. Yeah. 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 You yeah. can go 20 minutes, but neither of us were enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> so again, heavy, heavy snap down. Really trying to move Johnson around here. 
Fitz Johnson, who's had the better of it when he's actually managed to get the entries. Yeah, he's definitely had more attacks so far. And then oh, we see it again. Nice. Oh. Good show of sportsmanship there from Johnson. Almost managed to switch off that uh, that entry. We are through the first five, so somebody, believe it or not, is going to have to eke that first five minutes. And you got, I, I think you've got to give it to Devonte. He's the only one who was really looking to take those risks with those shots, even though not not much was coming of it. Um, I have to agree there. He definitely had the better work. Again, still collar ties here. Nine minutes left in this one. Devonte Johnson on the right-hand side of your screen taking on Arya S. Fanmaz of Pure Jiu-Jitsu. Thank you for joining us here live and exclusive on UFC Fight Pass. Still four more matches coming your way this evening. See Arya taking some big breaths there. Yeah, it's just a different energy system, isn't it? This you know, wrestling constantly versus being on the ground. I mean, yeah, there's a reason that wrestling matches are three <laughs> minutes <laughs> and not 15. Thing is, you, you've got to balance out. Yes, Ari is a much bigger guy. He's carrying a lot more muscle, a lot more mass in general, so he's going to get tired fast. But at the same time, Devontae's having to put so much effort into trying to move the bigger guy. So it's somewhat balanced. Both these guys are going to be pretty knackered by the end of this. And starting to get uh, get a bit dicey with these collar ties now. Oh, almost. Johnson tries ah. the power double. Forehead firmly planted in the chest, but this fan has an immovable wall. Yeah. Just checking he didn't get scratched. No. Yeah, so for those who don't know, Aria is very sweaty. <laughs> I know this from first-hand experience. It's actually, it's actually borderline impressive how <laughs> sweaty this man can get. But. Well, just getting tailed off by our referee, Oli Geddes, here. Something you rarely see. <laughs> just <laughs> just tailing off halfway through the match. A glance up at the clock from Esfan Maz. As we hit the halfway point in this one, and I'd really like to see the referee try and perhaps move them on a bit more now. Yeah, I think there should be some sort of rule where if it hasn't hit the ground within the first half of the match, they give them weapons or something. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just one of them. Not entirely sure what to say to that, Dan. Well, you know, <laughs> I'm just trying to keep it interesting. So as fan matters, they're going to tie up behind those triceps. Strong Johnson you, yeah, using that forehead to keep try and keep the frame intact. And again, as fan matters, glancing up at the clock. I mean, he may, he may have a strategy to try and wear him out for the first half of the match and then start to work harder in that final round. Yeah, but if he waits out the first two rounds and he, and he ends up losing the first two rounds on the scorecard, yeah, then... You just, you're putting yourself under unnecessary pressure Yeah, in a position where you need to third. submit someone and the other person just needs to not get submitted. What are you talking about, Barlow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just commentary, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. It would just be interesting to see, you know, What's going through their heads? Well, you're, you're going to talk to them. I'll well, try and find out, but um, I really do hope you know, it hits the ground. It's more. I'm curious about their awareness of how they feel those first ten minutes have gone, um, because I don't think either one is going to have a sense that they're up or, or not, as the case may be. So again, tying up at the wrist grips here. Trying to find a dominant position. We haven't seen as Fanmaz change level at all as of yeah. yet. Trying to. I'd actually, I'd actually say that the second round has been even, has been closer than the first round. Devonta not really going to attack the legs that much anymore. No, that's it. He didn't really have at least on in that first five minutes. He had a couple of pickups on the leg, albeit yep. readily defended by as Fanmaz. But uh, he had the attempt at the power double, but didn't really even manage to to make a, a dent there. A, a, you know, a big movement in the last 15 seconds of this round. Yeah, and literally could anything, seal it. anything now. If someone goes for a shot, even if it doesn't, nothing comes of it. It does seem like the pace has quickened just a little bit. But the pace has quickened, but the actual attempts 
have Devonte not. Devonte's really oh, trying to get into the hips here. Trying to get underneath him. It's a big drive. Oh, and it was a good call from uh, Referee Oli Geddes to save us from being crushed by 200 kilos. That's the second time he's done that today. But as you say, it does feel like perhaps the there. tempo has been upped a little bit, at least in perceived well, output. Devontae did just put that little bit of energy in for the last probably couple of seconds of the I think it might have been just off it, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I mean, the, the reality is that when it is this close and, and there's, they're playing for this, it, it is just, it's just the attempt to go for something gets you on the scoreboard. Yeah, I think they'll both be disappointed regardless of who wins this if this doesn't go to the ground at some point. Yeah, Sven is tying up on the back of the head. And again, glancing up at the clock. Yeah. Four minutes left. I mean, he's got to know there isn't a lot of time to do something decisive here. Okay, oh, okay. There we go. now it's interesting. Sven is trying to invert. Johnson scrambling, looking to immediately pass, knee cut through. Svamaz just framing him yeah, away, yeah, though. Good. Super heavy and super strong. Inverted guard retention, and look at the pace they're putting when they actually go to the ground. Svamaz trying to make those legs long and heavy. Manages to high leg over the top. Good for him. Like, actually doing something to make this match interesting. To yeah. take it to the ground. Yeah, I score that for Aria over for uh, Devonte. Looks well, like he caught, might have caught an eye poke there. Yeah, possibly. Devonte Johnson scrambling for everything he's worth to try and... Score a stack pass on this fan Maz there. And, oh, and they're saying he got a scratch on the eye again. It might just be sweat in his eye. I'm telling you, he really sweats. <laughs> you, I can't, under, I can't <laughs> understate how much he sweats. Well, let's see. Just uh, let him clear his eyes. Referee Oli Geddes has called for... Give that man a towel. ...a medic again here. It's sweat in his eyes. <laughs> let's... Uh, Devontae Johnson. I genuinely think it's sweat in his eyes. <laughs> Devontae Johnson is looking on here. We've got 2.50 left on the clock at the stop. Let's take a look at that scramble. So it's the attempted uh, jumping guard or jumping armbar. And you see immediately looking for that next pass is Johnson. And some good guard retention from Svan Maz. Forcing him to go inverted several times. See the big frame pushing away. They're going to get that leg over the top. And Johnson really trying to force those underhook passes. You see Svan Maz makes the legs very long and heavy. Huge levers when he needs them to be. Looks like he's getting treated by the medic a little bit. Maybe he did get an eye poke. Probably only exacerbated by sweat. <laughs> it's Josh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. So they're standing back up to the feet here. We're into the last two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> The crowd. The God ball. Yeah. This doesn't happen much. <laughs> the crowd appreciating a span man sitting back down to the ground. He's got to defend these underhook passes again. Looking to shoot those legs up. Yeah, Aria's uh, shooting that triangle yep. up. He's trying to make something happen. Devonte just shutting him down, yeah. getting into that deep knee slide position. Trying to feed that leg back inside. We're going to see some seated guard here from Esfan Maz. Jones is going to stand and pass. Look for him to shoot that knee cut across. How much time do we have left? Well, There's only the probably a couple of moments. Yeah. Uh, did they not stop the clock during that? They stopped the clock during the towel break. I haven't seen it restart yet, though. And ah. you can see Devontae well, getting I think, that, I think that clock is actually a little bit out. I think we lost about 20 seconds there. So At least. Interesting. A lot of action going on now. Yeah, a body lock pass. pass. Eyes recovering his guard well, getting that knee back. He's standing up. Let's see if Devontae <laughs> chooses to go to the ground now. I don't think he will. Well, I, I do actually think the timing mat side is independent of the clock you see on the screen. Oh, really? So, yeah, so I do expect this perhaps to go a little bit early, but we'll see. Being told that apparently it's only about three seconds out of whack, so... Still two minutes left to play for here. And I've got to say, the dynamism of these two when it actually hit the ground was... Uh, Really impressive. I guess uh, gas tank's just fine after all, Dan. Yeah. Personally, I I might give this last round to Arya. He's the only one who went for anything, pulling guard. Oh, He's putting himself in a bad position, but... It's tough, though, isn't it? Because it, everything he had to do in pulling guard was reactionary to some very aggressive passing attempts from yeah. Devontae Johnson. I don't know. I just want to see people push the pace. Yeah, I agree. He's taking risks. It's yeah, a, take yeah. some risks. It's, if it, it goes is, wrong, it goes wrong. You know, this is a 
it's a show. We're trying to be entertaining here. And it's certainly a perplexing case for the judges moving forward and certainly will serve as a case study to, uh, you know, inform and refine. Tries a foot sweep, ends up being a guard pull, and he's but again, back out of here. I is trying here. Yeah. You know, he's tried the foot sweep, didn't work. Devontae's done nothing really so I, far I, this yeah, round. He's, he's taken no risk whatsoever. I give, unfortunately, well, unfortunately, but I think that he's up two rounds to begin with. Yeah, I agree. What I will say is unfortunate is every time Devontae Johnson has tried a good entry to that yeah, drive, he's, he's gotten on the body, he's been so mat. close to the edge of the mat. Just finding the boundary one more time, down to the last 45 here. Having awareness of where you are when you're looking to push the pace is a massive part yeah. of the experience of competition, though. Well, a lot of takedown players actually play close to the edge of the mat. Yeah. For that reason, yeah. they can scramble out of bounds. Yeah. And you see Ari is continually pushing forwards, which is kind of forcing Devontae into that position. Yeah, he's definitely got uh, a bit of the crowd behind him. One last glance up at the screen. It's going to tell him there's 20 seconds left and somebody has got to push something here. Nice. And the first time he changes level, he's got an underhook here. He's looking for a trip, but uh, Jones managed to get the hips back. and looking to re-engage straight away. Yeah, I mean, they, I mean, again, that was Aria trying to yep. pull him back into bounds. Well, we're going to go to a judge's decision here, and Devante Johnson shakes his head. I don't think he's happy with his performance. So I'll have a word about it uh, with him in a moment, but it's going to come down to the judges and guys it's a it's a tough one it's really going to push the interpretation of the rule set here i think it comes down to the middle round is an interesting one we I had a yeah we've seen the replays here we had a few exchanges where they locked up and uh, it looked like someone was going to get the better of it and just found the edge of the mat but really most of the fight spent in this uh, shared collar tie position yeah very very close match in terms of scoring some of this passing of Devonte was very good when they hit the mat. You know, he's going side to side very nicely. Actually secured the, part, the guard pass very well. But this was only a, a few moments of the match. And in that round, really, I think this is that foot sweep attempt from Arya trying but to get it. he's going for it. He's going for it. Yeah, he's going for it. He was trying to push the pace. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout goes to distance, and we go to your judges, declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Devontae Johnson. I'm here with our winner, Devontae Johnson. Uh, Devontae, you just uh, apologized to me. Are you, something you're not happy about, perhaps, with that, that, uh, that match? Yeah, I wish there was more action. Um, I tried really hard to, like, you know, create scrambles, like wrestling. He's a big guy, strong guy. Judo black belt, it's hard to move him. But I tried, you know, he pulled. I tried to blitz his guard a few times. It's kind of hard to get around his body. He did a really good job of recovering his legs, kind of like going for a Kimura. I tried to like, kind of like hop around for his back over there. Didn't work, he kind of like spun up. So I wish there was more mat, more movement for 15 minutes, but you always can't control that, you know? How, uh, obviously here at Polaris, it's broken down into three five minute segments. How aware were you as the match went on that this was gonna be quite, quite a close one? I mean, I didn't really care, to be honest. Uh, no offense. I was just trying to do, <laughs> I'm sorry guys. Not taken. I don't. Seriously, you know, I, I said in an interview, I don't think too hard about strategy. I just try to go out there and fight hard. And, um, you know, this time I couldn't do what I wanted to do against him the way I wanted to. I, I apologize to the fans. But, you know, it happens. I'll be ready to do a better job, hopefully, the next time. Well, hopefully we can hook you up with another match. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Devante Johnson. I'm going to grab a, a quick word with our, our runner-up, Aria Esfanmaz. Aria, um... You had a couple of guard pulls. You tried. You tried to push a, push a, a, a few, uh, few bits of action there. Um, grueling, I think, is how I want to describe that one. Yeah, uh, I'm still getting used to no gi. It's really slippery, man. Tried to set up a lot of things, couldn't get anything. There was some kind of, I don't know what it was, but uh, yeah, I just want to say a few things, guys. Really sorry, guys. I'll do better, gi especially. Thank you so much for guys coming down. Even my tutor from year nine is here, so. <laughs> Good job to. Good job to Devontae, man. Sorry, guys, it sucked. I tried. I tried to go for flying stuff, but I don't know, man. It's slippery, no gi. 
We look forward to having you back again, Aria. Congratulations. <laughs> Aria, respond, Mouse, everybody.